familiar passage that I'm just going to refer to this morning was when uh, Jesus was at Caesarea Philippi with his disciples. I'm not going to go into great detail because uh, you're probably familiar with that part of the scripture anyway. But Jesus uh, was probably standing uh, with his back to a, a cliff. And in that cliff, there were hewn out parts of the rocks where idol worshipers had put their images in different locations, niches in that rock. And he said to his disciples that were before him, in light of all of that, who do people say that I am? And Peter made that statement. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. There were a lot of idol worship in Jesus' day. There's a lot of idol worship in our day as well, too. Um, every time I hear the old Imperials sing, that's one of my favorite gospel groups, one of the songs that they used to sing all the time was, O oh Buddha. And uh, it really highlights the fact that there are a lot of idols within our world today. Buddha was one of those, Hare Krishna, Sun Moon, Mohammed. These all are representative of charismatic leaders that have followers. So I want to ask ourselves a question this morning as believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, what sets us apart from all of these other idol worships and gods, if you will? So the question this morning that I really want to present to all of us is very simply this. Am I a true believer, a true disciple of Jesus Christ? Scripture says that James 2.19 the devil knows that Jesus exists and he trembles. So it's not just a part of knowledge, but it's a part of obedience and faithfulness as will be highlighted in our scriptures as we look at that this morning, I think. What is a disciple? I think I alluded to that uh, a while back of when I was a BSU director at School of the Ozarks. Uh, College of the Ozarks now in the Branson Hollister area. I went to a retreat one time for those of BSU leaders and it really came to my attention of this word disciple, <coughs> disciple. And so I asked myself the question, am I truly a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm a believer, I accepted him as a child, but as an adult, knowing what I know now, knowing what I know even today, am I truly a disciple, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Look with me in three passages this morning. I want to begin, first of all, in Matthew 16. Give you a chance to get there real quickly. Matthew 16, verse 24. And I'm reading from the NIV version. It's a little bit different than uh, what I was schooled on in the old King James. But here's what Matthew 16, 24 says. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Now flip over with me, if you will, to Mark, a similar account of what Jesus said, Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And then one similar passage in Luke's account of the gospel, Luke 9.23, Luke 9.23. Then Jesus said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves 
and take up their cross daily and follow me. It's interesting that Luke added daily, daily. Deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Now the old King James does not use the word disciple, but it says, if any man, if any man will come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, as Luke says, and follow me, follow me. To be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I? I mean, this instantaneous moment, right now, ask yourself that question. Are you a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? These three passages point out very significantly that we must deny ourselves. Matthew 6, says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That means that we need to put, as a disciple, we need to put the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and the kingdom's work above everything that we ever do. Everything that we ever do. It ought to be at the top of our mind. Not just as a preacher, not just as a former engineer, not just as a landscaper, or whatever God has called you to do as a homemaker, Whatever it is, every day and moment by moment, we ought to be considering ourselves, am I a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Not only on Sunday, not even on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or all the way through Saturday, but every day, every day. I mean, when we wake up of a morning, when we go through the day, are you thinking about being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this particular passage kind of deals with the do's and the don'ts. You must deny yourself. There are some things certainly that we need to do, but there are some things that we're not supposed to be involved in. That's denial. That's true denial. And so the emphasis in this particular passage is on, first of all, the don'ts. Staying true to God's truth, the truth of his word. As God said a couple of times in scripture, as he identified himself with his son, this is my son whom I love, whom I am well pleased with. That's a challenge to me personally. I hope it is to you. Am I that same way? Could God really say, to me spiritually or even verbally in an affirmation statement, this is my son whom I love, but I am well pleased, well pleased, because Rodney's willing to deny himself and put me first in every aspect of his life. Jesus was identified there in his baptism he was identified in his transfiguration as Peter, James, John were there and images of Moses and Elijah were there as well too and they said, should we build tabernacles here? No, go back down into the valley, Jesus said, and be my disciples, be followers of me. So am I, truly, truly am I, a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and am I pleasing in God's sight? On a daily basis, Luke says, on a daily basis, putting Jesus first. The second phrase that I want to highlight this morning is that of taking up your cross daily, as Luke says. Taking up that cross daily. Now, Jesus was crucified on a cross, literally crucified. Traditionally, we understand that Peter was crucified on a cross. He was upside down. John was exiled to Patmos because he was a follower, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in, in fact, folks, even right now, this instantaneous moment around our world, thank the Lord, not in the United States in a physical way, 
But there are people that are suffering right now because of their faith and their relationship in Jesus Christ and being disciples. Some are being killed. Some are being persecuted. About every, every other week that the pathway comes out from the Missouri Baptist Convention, there's always a sidebar there that talks about persecuted Christians. It's happening today. It's happening today. Jesus has not called us to take up a literal cross every day, although there are some that die because of their faith and are persecuted. No, what he's really referring to is the fact that whatever God has called you to do, whatever aspect of life that you're in, that's your cross and you should bear it for the Lord Jesus Christ as you're willing to stand up against the world and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Years and years ago, when I was a youth minister at First Baptist Church of Branson, one night we met at a home at a youth get-together, and I had prearranged for a highway patrolman that was in our church to come into that area and turn his lights on and his siren on and I had set the stage like there are people that are being persecuted in our world today because of their faith and their relationship as disciples in the Lord Jesus. And as he turned his lights on and his siren on and pulled into that driveway, I told the kids, we need to hide. We need to be quiet because he's liable to bust in the door. Now, somebody's probably not going to bust in the door today and take us to jail, but that's what people go through every day because they are disciples in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you willing to do that because of that type of detriment that might come to your life to be jailed? God forbid, but it, it could come in the United States. We're under persecution right now, whether you recognize it or realize it. And so Luke emphasizes that fact that we are to take up our cross daily. Matter of fact, all these phrases are prepositioned by must. It's not an option. We must deny ourselves. We must take up our cross daily. Take up our cross daily and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So, once again, am I a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Am I walking with Him each and every day of my life? Am I taking up the cross that God has called me to bear for him? And thirdly, the phrase says we must, thirdly, follow him. Follow him. After Jesus' baptism and he began his public ministry, there were crowds that were always around him. Multitudes of people around him. You remember in scripture, I just want to highlight three or four of those. The feeding of the 4,000, the feeding of the 5,000, a crowd was all around him. Matter of fact, it says there were 4,000 men and there were 5,000 men, but there were women and children there as well too. So a crowd of like 12,000 or 15,000 people gathered around the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember when he was passing through a city and a woman that had uh, bleeding going on in her body and she reached out and touched the hem of his garment and Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, they're pressing around us already. You know, how do we know who touched you? Well, there was a crowd around him at that time as well too. Remember when little Zacchaeus climbed up into the sycamore tree? He was in the midst of a crowd. He couldn't see Jesus as he was passing by. And so there were crowds around the Lord Jesus Christ a lot of his life in those three years, they were what I would call followers. They were interested in Jesus. They'd heard something different or they'd seen something different. They'd saw him heal the blind man or raise a man that was lame as he walked and picked up his bed and took off. Those were followers. This congregation and those online, followers crowds, multitudes, but how many of us and how many of them were true disciples, true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? 
In Matthew's account of the scripture that we're looking at this morning, he was speaking to his disciples, those 12 that were following him and living with him on a regular basis. And out of those 12, one of those betrayed him, Judas Iscariot. We know Peter, he made this stark statement here in Caesarea Philippi, but we know at the time of Jesus' arrest, he denied him those three times. Denied him those three times. I thought of Nicodemus as well. Nicodemus in John the third chapter. Nicodemus, a religious Pharisee, what did he do? He came to Jesus by nighttime. He didn't want the others to know that he was talking and visiting with Jesus. And he made that stark statement. Jesus, we recognize you. Rabbi, we recognize you to be a man sent from God. Nicodemus himself recognized who Jesus was, but we find out later on through a process he finally decided to become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, even though at that time he was interested and was following quietly Jesus. So where are you, my friend? Where are you this morning? as we consider this simple word, disciple, disciple. Just part of the crowd? Or are you and I truly, truly followers of the Lord Jesus Christ? Not just on a Sunday morning, not just on a Wednesday, but every day, every day. Working at Ford Motor Company around a bunch of ungodly men and some women too. Whatever God has called you to do, are you a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? I mentioned earlier that you gave me the privilege of uh, fulfilling my commitment to the St. Joe Baptist Association. And so this, uh, a week ago today, I took off on Sunday afternoon and gathered with the leaders that were there and got ready for the young people that were gonna be coming fourth through sixth grade is what we do in St. Joe. And so they were coming in on Monday. Well, on Thursday night, it's traditional to have a bonfire. And so whenever I was the preacher of the week, I would always encourage the boys and girls, youth or children to get ready to go back home the next day. They had fallen in love with Jesus maybe that week, or maybe they already knew Jesus and they'd been encouraged in their faith and their relationship disciples, young girls and boys. And so I challenged, before I left camp, I challenged the preacher of the week to help those young people prepare to go home the next day. Some of them were going back into terrible, terrible situations. Some of those were believers that had been encouraged. Some of those were brand new believers and they were going back, but they were, should be going back as disciples, followers denying themselves, take, taking up their young crosses and following the Lord Jesus Christ. 170 plus of children that we had from St. Joe Association that were at Grand Oaks this last week. Would they follow Jesus faithfully when they got back home? Even some of those adults that were there that had been challenged and spoken to through the week. Would they faithfully follow the Lord Jesus Christ, denying themselves, taking up their cross, and following him faithfully and obediently? So am I a disciple? That's the question for the morning. I hope you take that personally. Am I truly a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Folks, it's an everyday affair not just one time in a lifetime, or walking an aisle, or kneeling at the altar like Randy was alluding to this morning. No, it's living for Jesus every day. Every, every single day. So one of these days, either one or two things are going to happen to you and to me, everybody. Either the Lord Jesus Christ is going to bust the eastern sky or we're going to meet him face to face through death. One of the two things. And when that happens, 
will Jesus be able to look at you and me and say, you truly were my disciple. You followed me faithfully and obediently. Oh, that's not to say we're not going to stumble and fall once in a while. I do that too. But on a consistent basis, reflecting back, since you came to know Jesus Christ is the Savior and the Lord of your life, are you living for him every day as a disciple, as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you denying yourself, taking up your cross daily, and following him? I intentionally did not read on, but let's read on. Matthew 16, verse 25. After Jesus said, you must deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me, he also said, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Have you found your life as a disciple in the Lord Jesus Christ? Let's pray together. Father, what a high calling that you have extended to us, your love, your mercy, and your grace. And Lord Jesus, as the disciples gathered around you, as a crowd was there before you, as you challenged them, I pray that we have been challenged this morning as we would consider, if any man or woman would come after me, let them deny themselves take up their cross daily, and follow Jesus. In his name we pray, and amen.